It's Radio Free 501C, the voice of Rogue Tulips Consulting. Hi, I'm Cecilia Sepp. Don't forget to subscribe. We're on all your favorite podcast services. This week, I'm joined by one of my favorite guests and my good friend, Fern Carbonell, who's a wellness advocate, and she's going to be speaking with us about stress management and how to avoid burnout. It's an important episode, and it happens to be number 193. Hey everybody, it's Monday, April 24th, and that means it's time for another episode of Radio Free 501C. I'm your host, Cecilia Sepp. I'm the principal and founder of Rogue Tulips Consulting, and I want to thank you all for joining us this week. To our global audience, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you happen to be, and thanks again for listening. It's time for one of my favorite guests, Firm Carbonell, who is a wellness advocate. She joins us every quarter to share some more insight and great advice on how we can be healthier professionals and healthier in our life overall. So this week, Fern's going to talk with us about stress management and how to avoid burnout, which if you're anything like me, you probably need that. So Fern, welcome back to the show. So happy to have you here. Uh, Would you like to say hello to the audience and tell everybody a little bit about yourself? Um, Yes. Hello, um, Cecilia. It's great to be back. Um, Thank you for um, having me. Um, I'm Fern Carbonell. I am a wellness advocate and a yoga teacher. Um, I work specifically with uh, women in menopause on their menopause journey. But for today's topic of stress management, it, it will apply to everybody, no matter what your gender or your age, because we all experience stress. Great. Well, that is so true. I know there's a lot of stress going on in my world right now. So, so Fern, what is, uh, do you have a definition of stress? We all experience stress, you know, throughout the day. And it's just, it's, it's, it's a physical, it's just a physical response and um, which could increase your heart rate and also um, affect you mentally um, and physically as well, you know, well, let me back up because we, I think as a society, we are all chronically stressed. So Mm -hmm. we don't even notice it anymore. It's just a part of our daily lives. But if you pay close attention to your body, it will tell you when you're stressed because your heart rate will go up, your breathing will become shallow, you know, and you've got all kinds of crazy things happening in your head. Um, uh, so, so yes, it's, that's why it's so important to manage your stress and identify it. You know, that's such a good point. You know, I think that we, this actually kind of a scary point you made that it's just our life. Now we, we don't feel the pressure necessarily because we're under pressure all the time. And maybe that's why we just collapse on the weekends. Yes, absolutely. We're pushing ourselves all week long and um, not giving ourselves the break. So, um, so I wanted to, in, in managing your stress, I wanted to um, talk about three points and that is just identify your um, source of stress. So we'll talk about um, creating a stress profile um, and then prioritizing your self-care, which happens to be very difficult for everybody because we don't take the time to take care of take care of ourselves and then um, setting boundaries, you know, just learning to say no or not even saying no, but not right now. So those are the three things to just keep in mind as as you attempt to manage your stress in your own life. So you've already started talking about how we can identify our symptoms of stress. So which is like our reaction to the pressure or the stress around us. Uh, And I, when you say identify the source, what are some steps that people can take to do that? To identify the source? Yes. So um, to identify, so identifying your, um, the stress is being, knowing what is triggering your stress, Mm -hmm. you know, So it could be conversations, a difficult conversation with someone. It could be your workload at home. It could be all of the responsibilities that you're juggling. So take a look at all of those aspects of your life and see how you can minimize those stressors. Um, You know, we talked about setting boundaries, you know, being able to say no to someone um, because your schedule is, you know, your schedule is packed, but you have, you know, 
a lot of us have a hard time saying no because we don't want to disappoint anyone. But if your calendar is um, filled to the max, how can you possibly say yes to somebody? So you could you could offer an alternative. You can say um, not this time because my schedule is full, but maybe next month, mm -hmm. you know, or give me a little bit more time to consider it. Things like that. You know, I. <laughs> Wow, just so many uh, thoughts zooming through my own head uh, hearing you say those things, because I think we all need to learn that from experience about it's okay to say no or not now. It's okay to say next month, not this week. It's okay to just say no. Uh, I think, do you, do you find in your work that it's harder for women to say no? Oh, definitely, because we are always taking, we are the caretakers usually um, for everybody and, and we take the, the responsibility to schedule, um, you know, events for the family or just scheduling get togethers and, and just all of the daily things in life, doing grocery shopping, laundry, all of that. It just kind of falls on us, you know? <laughs> um, so yes, and, and it's hard to say no, especially when you're a woman, because you want everyone to be taken care of. So, yeah. Yeah. Cause we are definitely the caregivers. We're definitely the nesters. Uh, even if we don't have kids, like I don't have kids and I'm still kind of the nester. Like I'm the one who worries about what color the paint is on the walls and the, do we need new curtains? Uh, things like that. You know, my husband's great. He's as helpful as he can be, but like that stuff just really doesn't seem to get his attention. You know, he's just like, I'd rather go fix something, you know, uh, but it's just, it's the way our, our lives have changed. I'm not going to say changed, but it's the way that we evolved uh, as human beings and it's the way we live. Um, do you have some advice for women who want to uh, find that voice of not now later? Um, yes, definitely. I know it's hard, um, but start small. You know, um, it doesn't have to be a big decision, but um, yeah, just kind of play around with it. You know, next time somebody says, do you want to go out to lunch? Um, just say, oh, I'd love to, but I'm not able to because I have other commitments. Um, but can we do it next week? Right. Y yeah. And, and, and that also is... So if the person has a difficult time with that, you know, that's, it's really, it's really not for you to try to fix because it's that person who just has to really respect your own boundaries. You know, you've made it very clear. You've, you've communicated what your needs are and what your boundary is. And if that person is not accepting it, um, it might be time to just kind of reassess that or just ask them why are you having such a hard time with this you know so yeah and i i think so many people they're they're so demanding i think a lot of the way we live in the modern world it's instantaneous it's self gratification it's it's about me and i and i think people forget and i'm reminded of this every time i drive somewhere even if it's a short trip People don't seem to remember there's other people living around them, right? And what you do matters because it affects other people. But that's why it's so important that you take care of yourself, right? Right. And just practice self-compassion, just like you would, you would have empathy for somebody else. You know, turn that empathy onto yourself as well. Um, self-compassion is just, it, it's, it's, it's not being selfish, you know, it's just caring for yourself. So it's okay to have that, uh, to have, uh, to think about yourself. You know, and, and I think the women especially think I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't say no. There's a certain level of fear factor with women that I sometimes struggle with understanding. I'll be honest, uh, just because I don't um, have it. I will stand up for myself. I will stand up for others. And, and I will cut people loose if it's not a good relationship. I, I, you know, I think that's part of the self-care aspect. Why stay with a toxic relationship? It's, it's not helping you. Yeah. Yeah. That goes at, at a different um, psychological level. <laughs> 
Well, that's true. That is true. But I think you, know, you don't know everybody's story too. You right. Know. Well, see, there's that, but it's like, you know, your own story. And if this relationship isn't working for you and you're becoming increasingly uncomfortable, I think it's okay to kind of distance yourself from people because that's damaging your own self-care, in my opinion, because we don't know everybody's story. And because you don't know their story, but again, you know your story, you know, maybe that's not good for you to be around that person right now because you don't know what's going on. Yeah. Well, you could know your own story, but also have a difficult, still have a difficult time because um, there are just certain things that are ingrained in your mind and in your body. And it's just people really have a hard time turning other people away. So, um, yeah, I have just compassion for that. Yeah. And, and, and it's just you know, something that they have to work through. Yeah. And, and, you know, I agree because, you know, you want to try to help people. I know I always try to help people, but you know, you also have to use that caution, uh, for yourself. Uh, because I think if we give away too much of our self, then we don't have time. We don't have the self-care. We don't have the boundaries. And then, as you pointed out at the beginning of our conversation, uh, the stress is just normal now. And, and I think sometimes it gets ratcheted up uh, because we think yeah. we have to do something that we don't necessarily need to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I mean, and some of the simple things that you can do uh, uh, to manage your stress is um, giving yourself a digital detox or even, you know, in the evening, set a, set a boundary for yourself from your devices, you know, at seven o'clock, I'm going to, I'm not going to check email anymore, or, you know, just have rules for yourself that, um, and, you know, it'll be difficult in the beginning, as any sort of change in habit is, but, you know, stay persistent with it, and just kind of pay attention to how um, liberating it feels to not be, you um, to, to not be controlled by this device that you think you have to respond to all the time because you really don't. I mean, somebody might think it's urgent to them, but you know, maybe not so much to you. So that, and again, you know, setting boundaries. And if you have clients who have your text message to have your um, phone number to text you and they're constantly texting you, take them on Slack or some, uh, you know, let them know that after this time, um, I don't accept text messages or, you know, find some other form of communication with them. You know, that's really good tip, you know, uh, use a different way of managing the communication. Mm -hmm. Give out your, your mobile number to everybody. Uh, I mean, that could get dangerous. Yeah. (laughs) Well, you know, it's like one time uh, years ago, a guest on the show gave out their phone number. And so we, of course, edited that part out. And I said, no, don't give your phone number out. That's going out on the internet. It's going to live forever, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah, we definitely don't want to do that. So what are some other tips for uh, prioritizing our self-care? I think, you know, you said that was your second point. I I think that's a really important one. And it's sort of like the fulcrum between point one and three, Mm -hmm. uh, identifying stress and then setting those boundaries. So like the self-care is kind of the thing that balances all that out and keeps mm-hmm. it, keeps it, you know, moving. So what mm-hmm. are some tips for prioritizing self-care? Yeah. So, um, put yourself first, which is, I know going to be difficult, um, but set aside time for yourself every day, because what happens with stress is if, if you're not releasing the stress from your body, um, or trying to recover from it, it just accumulates. So it's like, you know, on top, you're accumulating stress in your body, and you're not releasing it. So you're constant. So that chronic stress begins to become a, a health issue. You know, you could have a heart issue, your, your, your um, blood pressure could increase. So, so resting, mm-hmm. making sure you're resting your body, making sure you're moving your body, uh, making sure you're getting good sleep, making sure you have healthy relationships, making sure that you're eating well, um, and not a lot of processed foods that can actually cause stress in your body with your digestion. So all of those aspects um, of your health 
uh, uh, you know, contribute to prior to, contribute to your self care. So just keeping all of those things in mind. Yeah, that's really a great point. What you said about processed food and some of that food is harder to digest. And I think that's an excellent point because it's so easy to grab, you know, a snack that's like a cupcake or a cookie or something, you know, that's like got so much salt in it. Uh, I'm so sensitive to salt now. Uh, I, it's like if I eat anything with real salt in it, I mean, I really just taste the salt because we just really don't eat that way anymore. We, we don't use a lot of salt or we use light salt and very little of it. Uh, but that, you know, salt makes you hold water. It makes you thirstier. It, it, it just, that's just a simple example too of daily life. And I know, uh, a lot of times people try taking multiple supplements. Like, I, you know, I have a brother who takes like, or at least he used to, I don't know if he does anymore, but he used to take like 15 supplements every day. And he talked me into trying it. And my nurse practitioner at the time said, why are you taking all these supplements? And I said, well, my brother, you know, he's, a, he's got two master's degrees in physical education. And he said, I should try this. And she said, well, do you feel any different? And I said, well, I gotta tell you, not really, uh, but I'm taking these things every day. And she's like, well, I think that's your answer. And it's really not helping. And then she pointed out, as you just did, Fern, then your body's got to process all this stuff. Because every time you put something in your body, it's got to deal with it. And so be, you know, I think that's a great tip about let's be really conscious about that, what we're putting in our body, because you're just mm -hmm. making it work harder. Mm -hmm. Yes, you want to put your energy where it, it's most useful, you know, so um, yeah, dig and digestion affects everything, because it, that's where all of the nutrients get dispersed. And, you know, you, you could have stomach issues. So yeah, so that's a completely different topic. But yes, yeah. digestion is very important. Yes, it is a different topic and does relate a little bit, you know, does relate to self care. But it's like, if this were a CAE domain of practice, it would be a subdomain. of self -care. <laughs> yeah. That will not be on the test. Don't worry. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but, but this really, so do you find um, if people schedule self-care, like they make an appointment with themselves, do, do you find that people tend to keep those appointments? Um, I know that I do. I can't speak for anybody else, but yes, if, if it's on my calendar, it's going to happen. If I don't put it on my calendar, that just means I'm not committed to it, right. you know? So yeah, make a commitment, put it on your calendar and pay attention to it. Don't put yourself and don't cancel it when the day comes, you know, take care of yourself, even if it fits for an hour, but, um, yeah, maybe once a month, you can put something on the calendar for a long weekend or a day off or something, something to just really relax your body, focus on yourself where you're doing something that you enjoy. Like, you know, I know you enjoy gardening, you know, you can spend your and being outdoors, you know, you can't, it can't get any better than that for um, rest and relaxation. So find something that you love to do and commit to it. Yes. And, and that is my thing, like in my journal, my daily planner. Yeah, folks, I still have a paper book because it doesn't need batteries. <laughs> so I don't have to worry about it. But uh, I, under the spiritual category, it says, what are you going to do? And this time of year, I write gardening because it's, I leave the phone in the house. I go outside. There's, it's just, you know, the outdoors, the birds, getting my fingers into the earth. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very fortunate because I have a very nice, uh, little piece of property, uh, with several garden beds and a nice backyard. And so I can sit outside and just kind of watch the birds and things like that. Cause I love bird watching. Oh, so it sounds so peaceful. It's really nice. And I'm planning, remember last year for, and I planted all those dragon begonias and mm -hmm. I was, they got so big. <gasps> And mm. so I'm planning those again, as soon as they arrive, I'm waiting for this to ship. But oh, nice. Yeah. So, and then when I look out the window, I see them and they make me happy, you know? Mm. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's kind of my thing that I like to do, or at least thinking about it. I don't, unfortunately, I don't take that advice all the time um, bec because working, I have to work. And then I tend to do a lot of gardening on the weekends. And unfortunately the weather's always bad on the weekend, the last couple of months, like it rains or it's too hot or something, you know? Um, but, you know, try, I do try to get it in and I will definitely be doing it uh, when the plants come. 
<laughs> but yeah, because I have to, because I have to get them in the ground. But it is, it is hard. Like I do, it's a bad habit I have. I'll admit it. Uh, is I will say, oh, I want to do this thing that I enjoy. And then I tend to say, well, I have a responsibility. And and that's a bad habit I've always had. I do what I'm supposed to do, not what I want to do. And yeah. And sometimes, you know, when your body is rested and your mind is rested, your focus is so much better. Your productivity is so much better if you've ever noticed that, you know? So it is, resting doesn't mean you're not doing anything. You know, resting means that you're just taking a pause to take care of yourself so you can come back more resilient and stronger and more focused, you know, and sometimes a day off or consistently just um, doing something during the day where it's just you, you know, breathing exercises, doing yoga, you know, just something really nice for yourself that you enjoy and makes you feel good. Yeah. Yeah. That is the best advice. Uh, I don't think it's wrong to not do something for a few minutes. I do that. I do practice that. Uh, so I try to take a few minutes when I can. And, and I tend, I do, like you just said, I do tend to feel more focused and my energy is refreshed. Uh, and I've, you know, I've been dealing with a lot of stuff in the background on the personal level lately. So, you know, that kind of distracts me and takes some of my energy away, but I still, you know, just say, I'm, you know, I'm going to go walk the dogs. The dogs need to walk. It's nice. I'm going to do it anyway. I don't care if I, I, I should be working, you know, because as a solopreneur, I should always be working, <laughs> but it's like not how I want to live my life. So, yeah, but, but you, you should also be resting and, you know, yeah. relaxing. <laughs> you, you could have both. You could have both. You could work, you could work your butt off really hard, but also build in the rest. <laughs> So you can keep going hard. <laughs> I love it. I love it. It's true. And that's true. And it's like, why? It's reality. Why, it, it is. And it's like, why work so hard if you're not going to enjoy your life? Yeah. You know, it, it's like, why that's have funny. cute little dogs if you never spend time with them or a beautiful mm -hmm. garden if you're never going to enjoy it? Right. I totally, mm -hmm. totally. So is there anything else, you know, before we wrap up for this quarter? And again, just love having you come and share all your insights and advice and reminding us to take better care of ourselves. I just love that. Is there anything else you wanted to share with the audience today? Um, gosh, we've covered so much. Um, there's just one other thing is to when when you are feeling stressed or when you feel like a strong reaction is coming, pause and breathe. You know, sometimes that will just calm your body so that you can um, respond in a more mindful and thoughtful way instead of raging. Yeah, and you know that happens a lot. You, you know, so take take the time for yourself to just pause instead of reacting, take that deep breath and then exhale it out as slow as you can. <laughs> That's right. Because that causes, you know, that causes so many good things to happen in your body. I just mm -hmm. love that, uh, the four, four, four breathing technique you've shared in the past. Mm -hmm. I use mm -hmm. that a yes. lot actually, and yeah. share that with other people and it does work. So uh, well, for the audience who doesn't know what that is, Fern, could you explain the 444 breathing? Um, yeah, so the 444 breathing is a way to calm your body, um, tap into your parasympathetic nerve, which is the rest and digest um, uh, nervous system. So um, what you do is you inhale for four, hold for four, and then exhale for four. And really just doing a longer exhale will tap more into your parasympathetic nerve, you know? So give it a try because um, I use it, I use it as well. So it, and millions of people use it as well. So it's not my, it's not my own personal technique. <laughs> it's a very well-known yogic uh, <laughs> breathing. <laughs> but it's a good one to share. And I learned it. It is. Me. So I tell people, Fern learned this and then she taught me. So uh, that's great. So. Well, you know, as you know, you've been a regular guest for several years now. Uh, so, you know, I always like to ask my guests, what's the one thought you would like the audience to take away today? And how can they get in touch with you if they'd like to get more information? Yeah, set those boundaries for yourself. You're going to feel a lot better. Um, do Start small and, and see how that goes and just start building. Um, you can follow me on Instagram at Fern Yoga Wellness. 
And my website is also fernyogawellness.com. And I do hope you get in touch with me. Thank you. That's great. Uh, thank you, Fern. And uh, actually, I, I would like to share with the audience, Fern recently uh, completed uh, her yoga teacher certification training. Uh, that was just a couple months ago, right? Yeah, it was last last fall. Yeah. Last fall. Oh, it was last fall. So mm -hmm. well, a few months ago. Yeah. It's yeah. uh but you know, time goes so quickly. It seems like it just happened. But uh congratulations on that. I, I think that was a wonderful achievement. And I know it took some time and effort for you to do that. So uh I think it demonstrates how committed you are to being a wellness advocate. Yes, definitely. So uh that's great. So well, we have to go rogue for now. Uh, Fern will be back next quarter with some more advice for us to try to keep us on the path to being a healthier person all around. So uh, thank, I want to thank Fern again for joining me. And uh, thank you all for joining us. If you'd like to learn more about Rogue Tulips Consulting, what we do, and how we can help your organization bloom outside the box, check out our website, roguetulips.com. There's an outline of our services and fees on our services page. Uh, we can also talk with you about more specific projects if you don't see your specific project listed. Uh, so check that out again. That's roguetulips.com. Uh, you can subscribe to our newsletter from the website as well. And hear our musings and news uh, in the future. If you are a current CAE, a CAE candidate, or just a curious sort like myself, you might also want to check out the Rogue Tulips Education Program, the 501C League. It has its own website, the501cleague.net. So we will be forming new courses and new study groups in the fall. So check it out and see what we have to offer. And we will be back next week with another exciting episode. So if you haven't subscribed already, don't forget to subscribe because you don't want to miss any of the great conversations we're going to keep having here as we work up toward our 200th episode in June. So thanks for joining us, everyone, and we'll see you next time.